there, kids. My name is Jessica, and welcome to the Vegas PBS STEAM Camp Science Lab. STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. And these aren't just subjects we learn in school. STEAM helps us improve our lives and improve our community. Today, with the help of experts, you and I are going to learn about the STEAM that is all around us in Southern Nevada, some you might have never noticed before. Then I'm going to show you some fun activities that you can do at home to learn more. You'll even have the chance to send me pictures or videos of your results, but I'll talk about that a little more later. To get started, we just need a question to investigate. Oh, did you hear that? Looks like I'm getting a video call. Um, and it's my friend Luis. I can't wait to see what question he has for me today. Hey Luis, how are you? Hi Jessica. I was wondering, how does the water that we flush down the toilet get clean? Oh, that's a great question, and I've wondered that myself many times. Let's talk to my friend Chris at the Clark County Water Reclamation District to learn more. Hi, I'm Chris Kuhlmeyer. We're here at the Clark County Water Reclamation District, where I'm a wastewater treatment plant operations specialist. Here at the Clark County Water Reclamation District, our job is to treat wastewater that's collected throughout the valley. Wastewater is all the water that ends up in your toilet, sink, maybe at a restaurant, maybe at an industrial facility or a factory or even a hotel. That water is collected and sent through 2,000 miles of piping to get down to us here on the east side of the valley. Our job is to reclaim as much wastewater as possible. We're aware of how critical water is living out here in the Mojave Desert. As water is collected in the collection system and brought down to the wastewater treatment plant, a lot of material isn't degradable and can't be treated at the wastewater facility. That's why it's important that when we deal with our toilets in our homes, we only flush the three Ps, uh, poop, pee, and paper. When that material does get into the system and does get to the plant, we have to screen it out. As material is collected out of our system and screened off of the bar screens, all of that material is collected and deposited into these trailers. An additional stage of treatment is settling out uh, more solid material like coffee grounds, eggshells, uh, denser solids. They're also collected and deposited into the other trailer. We collect enough material out of, this, out of the system that we have to transfer these trailers to the landfill two to three times a week. Uh, that frequency is increasing as our population continues to go up and our flows continue to go up. The next stage of treatment, after we've screened off all the screenable materials and we've settled out all the grit materials, is to introduce the flow of water to clarifiers. A clarifier is nothing more than a great big tank of water that's designed to slow the flow so that anything that can sink will sink and anything that can float will float. In wastewater treatment, when we're able to float material or sink material, it's very easy for us to remove it. Uh, anything that floats to the top, we can skim off and dispose of it. The material that settles to the bottom is called sludge and we're able to pump that out for dewatering and transfer to the landfill. After the wastewater has gone through the bar screens and the grit collection systems, we've processed the water through the clarifiers where we've tried to float out whatever we can float out and settle out whatever we can settle out. The next stage of treatment is to try to eliminate whatever material is still in the water. We use a biological treatment process to do that. Uh, here at Clark County Water Reclamation District, we utilize technology called an aeration basin. An aeration basin is simply uh, introducing a bacteria that likes to eat the material that's still in the wastewater. Just like you and I have to eat to survive, so do the bacteria. They also need oxygen. And if you look out at the aeration basin, you can see all of the bubbles from the air that we're introducing uh, to make sure that we've got a nice environment for the bacteria to do an efficient job. After the water has gone through filtration and we've captured as much matter as we can from the water, it's time to disinfect. We achieve disinfection at Clark County Water Reclamation District by utilizing ultraviolet light. Ultraviolet light achieves disinfection by prohibiting any pathogens, that's bacteria and viruses, from being able to reproduce. If they can't reproduce, they're not gonna pose a hazard to us if we come in contact with them. 
Clark County Water Reclamation District, along with the treatment plant at the City of Las Vegas, the City of North Las Vegas, the City of Henderson, treat almost 200 million gallons of wastewater every day. And it's important that we do an effective job so that we can discharge that clean water back out to Lake Mead, where we can use it again if needed. Thanks, Chris. Let's review what we learned. Wastewater is all the water that goes down toilets and sinks. Our wastewater travels down pipes to treatment facilities across southern Nevada. These facilities reclaim the wastewater, which means they clean it so it is safe to return to our environment. Wastewater moves through different filters to remove solid material. This solid material is collected and sent to the landfill. The final stage is to disinfect the water using ultraviolet light to remove bacteria and viruses. Now it's our turn to think like scientists to learn more about water filtration. When I was cooking spaghetti last night, I noticed that I have a kitchen tool that acts like a filter. When I poured my cooked noodles into this strainer, the tiny holes let the water pass through, but not the noodles. That makes me wonder, how can I build a super strainer that would remove even smaller particles from water, like dirt? So here's the plan. You're going to investigate which materials you have around the house that make the best filters. To do this, you will need an empty two liter plastic bottle, a measuring cup, scissors, tape, a timer, and a bottle of dirty water. I just mixed a little dirt with water and I put it into this bottle. First, ask a grown up to help you cut off the top of a two liter bottle. When you're done, it's a good idea to wrap the edges with tape in case the ends are still a little sharp. Then flip the top half of the bottle over and place it on the bottom half's opening like a funnel. Now you'll need to collect different materials to use as filters. I selected a paper towel and a pair of socks. But these aren't the only things that you can use. Be creative and see what else you can find around your home. You will also need a chart to collect your data. In the first column of your chart, write the name or draw a picture of the materials you chose. When you've selected all of your materials, observe their properties. Use your senses. What do your materials look like and what do they feel like? Let's describe the properties of my sock. Using my eyes, I see they have tiny little holes in them. I also notice using my sense of touch that they're really fluffy and stretchy. Once you've described the properties of your materials, write your observations on your chart. Which materials do you think will make a good filter? Make a guess. Then one by one, place your materials on the top of your filter. Measure out one cup of dirty water and then pour that dirty water on top of your filter. Observe what happens when it passes through the filter. How long did it take to make your water completely pass through your filter? And did your filter trap the dirt? Rinse your two liter bottle and repeat the investigation until you've tested all of your materials. And be sure to record your observations in the last box of your chart. Keep in mind that even though your filters are removing some of the dirt from the water, it's still not safe to drink. So when you're done with this investigation, use your dirty water to water a plant. Then look at your chart. Did you notice any patterns? What kind of materials were better at being filters? And why do you think that is? And what would happen if you used two or more filters at the same time? Now, let's check in with Luis, who's doing this activity at home right now. Hey Luis, how's it going? Hi Jessica. I made my filter. My mom helped me cut the, the bottle and I put some rocks under, under it like this. And how I made my this water dirty is I mixed some soil and water and it's dirty. And you can see some soil right there. My chart of the water filter, the materials tested were rocks. And the properties of the material is that they look brown and they're hard. Now I'm gonna test my water filter to see if it goes down the drain. Down the drain. It looks still a little bit dirty to me. Well, I want to try some dryer sheets or coffee filters next. Now let's check in with Xenia, who's doing this activity at home right now. Hey Xenia, how's it going? Hi Jessica. 
Right now, I'm filtering some water with some cotton balls that are soft and fluffy. When I tried it with cotton balls last time, it just went through and it just was very dirty water. So now I'm going to add some rocks to it to see what happens next. So now we're gonna see what happens if I, when I added the rocks. I noticed that this is still dirty water and I think that I maybe should have added some more rocks to make it clearer. But yeah, it's still really dirty. Great job. Awesome items to test in your water filter too. Thanks for sharing your work. An important part of being a scientist is sharing your work with others. Visit our website at vegaspbs.org slash steamcamp to submit videos or pictures of your results to me at Vegas PBS with your grown-ups permission. We will post some of your projects on our website and if your project is selected, we will mail you a cool PBS kids bag and a new book. When you visit our website, you'll also find a copy of the chart that we use to keep track of our data and links to PBS kids shows and activities to learn more about filtering water. Speaking of learning more, one of the best ways to learn more about a topic is to check out a book. My friend Marisa is a librarian and she is going to share a book with you to help you learn more about what life would be like if you had to walk miles each day just for clean drinking water. Hi kids, welcome to the library. I'm Miss Marisa from Summerlin Library, and today you learned all about water filtration. Well, I'm gonna share with you this book, The Water Princess, written by Susan Verde and beautifully illustrated by Peter H. Reynolds. Can you imagine what life would be like without clean water? You couldn't get a glass of water out of the tap or even take a bubble bath. What if you had to walk miles and miles to get water for not only your family, but for your neighbors too? and then boil it to make sure it's clean. That is the life of self-proclaimed Princess Gigi. Her village in Africa is surrounded by beautiful land, but clean water is nowhere to be found. Every morning, she greets the sun as she makes the journey to the muddy water well, miles away with her mother. She rules over her land with song and dance on the way there. Instead of a crown, she wears a heavy pot on her head that is used to collect the water. But Princess Gigi remains optimistic dreaming of a day when her village will have clean water of its own. Inspired by the childhood of model Georgie Bidel, this moving story expresses the struggle that many people all over the world go through, but also brings hope for a future when clean water is accessible by all children. To learn more or to reserve your copy of The Water Princess, visit lvccld.org or visit your nearest library and make sure to ask about our summer program. Welcome back to the Vegas PBS STEAM Camp Science Lab. I have learned so much already today and I really hope you have too. And we still have a lot of time left, so let's investigate another question. There's my next caller. It looks like it's my friend Xenia. I'm so glad you have another question for me. What is it? I was wondering how water slides work. Ah, I love that. And luckily we have a friend at a water park that's standing by to help answer that question. Let's go talk to him. I'm Science Mom, and today we are going to find out how water slides work. We're at Cowabunga Bay, which is full of amazing science. Let's go. Water slides are all about friction and energy. If you understand those two things, then you know how they work. Look at this plate I have right here. I've got a jar of peanut butter and an eraser. And if I lift them up, then I'm giving more energy, more potential energy to my peanut butter. And if it gets high enough, then it falls over. But to get the eraser to slide, I have to take it even higher. The higher something is, the more potential energy it is, but whether or not it slides has to do with friction. You can try this at home. Get a cookie sheet and try out different objects. You'll see that the heavier they are and the more lubricated or greased your cookie sheet is, the sooner they will slide. And that's what we're gonna test right now on these water slides behind me.
We just climbed a lot of stairs, and that means that we are at a higher elevation, we have more potential energy. But this slide in front of me is dry. We're gonna try going down it without any water and see if it works. Now that the slides are wet, it's going to be an entirely different experience. Watch this. Go! That was so much fun. Water parks are full of science, whether it's something like this slide behind me or a lazy river or a wave pool. It all comes down to the incredible chemistry of water and the physics of height and friction. The next time that you're outside, I hope you'll have fun exploring the science of what happens when you get wet. Hi, I'm Sharaf. I work for Cowabunga Bay Water Park. I have one of the funnest jobs in the world. I get to bring people to the water park every day and make sure they have a good time. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how we use science to make the water park fun. Behind me in the billboard, we have a huge pump room. In the pump room, there are massive fans that act like a vacuum. The vacuum pulls the air into the pipes and pushes the air into the water, which creates massive waves for you to enjoy in the wave pool. you're seeing is the pump room. Water is pushed through the pipes and up the pipes behind me to each individual lane of Surfin USA, which is our mat racer that you saw Science Mom and her family ride down. Our water slides are engineered and manufactured in pieces. The pieces are made out of fiberglass because they're easy to mold and very slick when you slide down them. When the pieces arrive here at our water park, we put them together just like a jigsaw puzzle. Water slides require a lot of support, so we use strong steel beams to keep you safe. Thanks for spending some time with me at Cowabunga Bay. I hope the next time you go to a water park, you look at all of the engineering and science and see how that made your day possible. Thanks and have a great day. Thanks, Sharaf and Science Mom. Let's review what we learned. Water parks are filled with science and engineering. Friction happens when one surface rubs against another. Water reduces friction between your body and the water slides so you go faster. Your speed also depends on energy. A taller slide has more energy than a shorter slide. Water park slides use pumps to push water up pipes to the top. Each slide is supported by strong steel beams to keep you safe. Now it's our turn to think like engineers and build our own water slides. In order to do this, we are going to use the engineering design process. All engineers start their work by coming up with a goal or a problem they want to solve. Your challenge will be to build a water slide that doesn't leak or spill water using materials you find around the house. It also has to be strong enough to hold the water and the object sliding down it. To do this, you will need to use your imagination and make a plan. Gather different recyclable materials like toilet paper rolls, paper towel tubes, cardboard boxes, plastic wrap, straws, and plastic cups. But these aren't the only things you can use. Be creative and see what else you can find around your home. You will also need glue, tape, and a glass of water, as well as a bowl to catch the water at the bottom of the slide, like a pool. You'll also need small objects to test your slide, like a ball or a marble. Hold your objects in your hands so you can feel how heavy it is. Then compare the strength and weaknesses of the materials you chose. How are you going to use them in your design? Are they going to be strong enough to support your object and the water? Which materials will you use to make sure your water slide doesn't leak? Draw a sketch of your design before you start. The next step is to create your water slide. Take your time and test the pieces as you go. 
Testing your project as you go is a great way to save time and fix mistakes if you realize something isn't working. When you have your slide together, test it. Ask a family member to slowly pour a glass of water down your slide while you release your object. Did it make it to the pool? Did your slide leak? If your design didn't work the way you planned, it's okay. Improve it and test it again. And if it did work, find a bigger toy to test. How much water is needed for your larger toy to go down the slide? Now, let's check in with Xenia, who's doing this activity at home right now. Hey Xenia, how's it going? Hi Jessica, I'm trying to make a water slide and it's supposed to go up and in case someone drowns or they need to catch something, there's a lifesaver and a net. So when they come up and they go down the water slide, they can just go right into the pool. And then I'm still working on the water slide to put it on like this and trying to make it curve. I'm trying to put plastic on my paper towel tube because the paper towel tube is not waterproof, but plastic is. So I'm going to put it on so that it doesn't fall. I'm going to use stilts. And then I'm going to try to make it curve. And then I might test it with a ping pong ball or with a little person. Now let's check in with Luis, who's doing this activity at home right now. Hey Luis, how's it going? Hi Jessica, this is my design plan for the, the slide. I put some, some cups and I tape them. There's one and I put some straws too. There. My mom helped me cut these paper towel tubes. I'm gonna use it for it to just like slide down. I'm gonna use the foil to keep the slide dry. Now I'm gonna put my slide between these straws, but I just hope it balances. I think I'm gonna need some tape. I got more work to do. I'll talk to you later. That was a really creative design. Thanks for sharing your work with us. It's really important as part of the engineering design process to share your work. And kids, I want you to share your water slides with me. You can submit a picture or a video of your finished project to me through our website at vegaspbs.org slash steamcamp with your grown-ups permission. And remember, if you're submitting a video, make sure I can see what you're doing and hear what you're saying. Also, you'll wanna keep your video to one minute or less. We will select some projects for our website and if we choose yours, you will get a cool PBS Kids bag and a new book. When you visit our website, you'll also find the steps of the engineering design process that you will follow to build your water slide and links to PBS Kids shows and activities to learn more about water slides. Now, let's visit the library one more time to discover books you can check out to learn more about the engineering and science behind water slides. My name is Miss Shanna and I'm a librarian here at the Windmill Library. I heard you learn all about water slides today and built one yourselves out of recycled materials. That is so, so cool. Well, I bet it's summer, it's hot, and I bet you are excited to get out there and enjoy the water. And I have some really cool books that talk about water slides and you can learn a little bit more about them. And we're gonna start with this one. How did they build that water park by Nancy Robinson Masters? And this is all about the engineering behind water parks. This is how they design it, planning for fun, how they design the slides and how they talk about the pipes and the water pumps and how they make sure it is awesome. So you have the best time ever when you go to your own water park. So I definitely recommend checking out this book. This is a lot of fun and you can learn all about it and how they build it. Next up, we have all about amusement parks and water parks. Now this one is by Joanne Mattern and this talks a little bit more about the history of water parks. It's a place for fun and how they came about. America's first water parks, 
by the beach, um, by the ocean, a little bit more in depth. So if you wanna know the history of water parks and how they started and how they became so cool and awesome, you can definitely check out this one and how they're gonna be even more cool in the future. I highly recommend this book by Joanne Mattern, Amusement Parks and Water Parks. And then last but not least, we have focus on friction. And this is why water parks are so cool. It's all about the water. This is called Hands on STEM, Focus on Friction, also by Joanne Matter. Sounds like she knows a lot about how to have fun at a water park. This is all about why water parks are awesome. So you know, liquids help you have fun at a water park. They make you go fast down those slides. They make them super awesome. And they also make sure you stay safe. And this is all about how that works. And of course, you learned a little bit about that today in your experiment, and you can learn a lot more in this book. And if you wanna do more experiments, you can go to lvccld.org to check out some more books or check out your local library and ask about all of our cool summer programs as well. Thank you so much.